Hold on, I'm entering my password. You won't tell anybody, right? This is what a password looks like for a security guy. And we'll just let it autocomplete, if only it could do that in the real world. Well, a really good password looks like this. You can remember that, right? Piece of cake. Well, maybe not. Um, what would be better than a really good, complex, secure password? I'll tell you this, no password. Would you like that? Yeah, let's get rid of the password entirely, but let's not compromise on security. Is there a way to do that where you can have security and convenience at the same time? Sounds kind of crazy, but let's take a look. Okay, so what's the problem with passwords? Well, it turns out this is the face of the enemy when it comes to passwords, it's people. Because if left to their own devices, this is what people are going to choose as their passwords. We know this because we can look and see at when there have been password breaches and look at what those passwords were that were most frequently chosen. Here's a favorite of mine. Yeah, people really choose that as their password. So people pick bad passwords, then they can't even remember their bad passwords that they selected, especially if they were good enough to pick a good password, that's even harder to remember. And then what do they do? They put that same password on every single system that they use so that if one of these systems falls, then they all fall. And all an attacker has to do is figure out how to get into one, and then they can get into everything into that person's life. So one of the options then that people have looked at, and it's a solid option if you have to use a password, is a password manager. Let's take a look at how that works. So here we've got a user, and they're gonna log into a piece of software we'll call a password manager, and it's gonna store strong, unique passwords for every single system that they need to log into. So there's a whole bunch of these back here. It keeps a unique password for each one. The user does not have to remember that. They just have to know how to log into the password manager, and then the rest of it's handled for them. Beautiful. Until you consider the fact that we still have these guys out here, the bad guys. And what if this guy sends a, an email to this person, a phishing email, that convinces them to then click on the phishing website, which is a bad website. And it looks like a legitimate website. They try to log in, they enter their password, and even if the password came from the password manager, even if it was really secure, this guy has now got your credentials. That's one problem. Another problem, what if this guy figures out how to break into one of these systems, in any of them? The, the password that you have is stored in probably a hashed form. At least we hope it's been encrypted with a one-way hash. If not, it's even worse. If they have that and they're able to then later brute force and break that password, well, then this guy still wins. So the fact that a password exists is already a problem in the first place because that password has to exist in lots of different places, potentially here as well. So that's the problem space. Again, passwordless, if we can get rid of the things entirely without compromising security, would be a better option. Let's take a look at how we could do that. So authentication, that is answering the question, who are you, is based upon three different things. It's based upon something you know, something you have, or something you are. Something you know would be a password or a pin. Something you have a particular device, for instance, that you carry around with you. Something you are would be a biometric, a measurement of your physical characteristics. And multi-factor authentication, or MFA, is where we basically combine multiples of these, sometimes all three, sometimes just two, and combine these into uh, a soup that then gives us higher confidence that you are who you claim to be. Okay, let's take a look at what some of the alternatives are and what we could use these for and where their strengths and weaknesses are. Now, I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna be a little controversial. Some of you are gonna disagree with the way I characterize these. There are a lot of variables, so I'm having to generalize. So give me a little space on this, but this is in general what I think about this. One possibility is to use, get rid of passwords and use a hardware token, a device, a separate device that you carry around with you. Some of the early versions of these had an LCD display with a six digit number that changed every 60 seconds or so. And, and you had to keep that with you. Well, from a cost perspective, not so good because you're adding an additional device 
and that div additional device gets lost or stolen, breaks, uh, has to be replaced. And so people were famous for losing these things all the time. From a convenience standpoint, definitely not convenient because now that's another thing I got to keep up with. Uh, how about from a security standpoint? Well, security wise, it was actually pretty good. And you could use this in combination, as I mentioned, with multi factors, but a lot of times you might just use this by itself. And if you used it just by itself, it still might be more secure, you could argue, than just a basic user chosen password because people choose bad passwords. Now, how about another option? Uh, a one time password, a one time thing that is only used for a specific period of time and then it times out. A classic example of this, you see these all the time. You go to log in and then it sends you a text message with a six digit code. And so that, um, you know, the cost of that is not bad. You know, we can generate SMS messages pretty easily. Sometimes we do them in emails. Sometimes even an app will pop up and do it. But we'll take a look at this example. However, from a just general convenience standpoint, well, it may or may not be very convenient. That's going to kind of depend on how the particular implementation is done. Some of the devices now are smart enough to be able to read that automatically for you and stuff it in on the field for you. In that case, the convenience is not bad. You just have to wait a little while. But otherwise, if you're having to type that in, it's not so convenient to do something like that. How about from a security standpoint? I'd say this is pretty good. It's definitely an improvement because it's having to, in fact, prove that you have something. In fact, we could take a look back at these different alternatives and say, this is based upon something you have. This is also based upon something that you have. Um, and, and so we're using these in addition maybe to a password or in place of a password. Uh, then using a push notification to an app is another op application, another possibility. You have an app already installed on your phone, you pre-registered the phone, and when you go to log in, it pops up a message on your phone and you look at that, and then you basically unlock your phone with a pin that you have chosen. Well, okay, how do we think about this? Well, the cost is not bad. Most people have a, a phone with them already, a mobile phone, so we're not having to deploy new devices that have to be dealt with in that way. Um, that from a convenience standpoint, again, pretty convenient because if you're like me, your phone is rarely more than uh, arm's length away from you most of the time anyway. So it's already there. It's not an additional device that you're having to carry. And then from a security standpoint, yeah, I think it's better than just a, a, a self-chosen password because again, people are really pretty bad at choosing passwords. And in this case, now we're combining. So it's something you have, the pre-registered phone, combined with something that you know, a particular pin. So you, you use that then to, uh, to do multi-factor form. And again, no real password, although you could argue this is a little bit like a password. How about a different form of this? About a push notification with a biometric. So the push notification pops up on your phone, then you either look at the phone and use a facial recognition or fingerprint re recognition or some form of biometric. So now we're combining something you have along with something you are. And this, how does this stack up? Well, again, the cost is pretty low because we can usually do this from your mobile phone and most people have one of those. Convenience, you've already got this sitting around with you. I would argue this gets actually more secure than some of the other things because it's gonna be harder to replicate, assuming that the biometric reader is good, it's gonna be harder to replicate your face or your fingerprint than it would be a six digit pin. So that information could exist in multiple places, for instance. And then finally, the one that I think is the best of these alternatives uh, would be FIDO, which is the Fast Identity Online Standard. I did a video on this earlier, so actually two videos, so go take a look at those if you want to know more about how this works. But it's a cryptographic, uses PKI uh, along with a biometric for you to unlock the cryptographic keys. And then those are exchanged, and the beautiful thing about this is there's no password stored on the server. There's no password to steal, therefore no password to fish. So it, has a, it deals with a lot of the issues that we saw with some of the previous options that deal with passwords. And you don't have to remember anything. In most cases, you just look at your phone and unlock it and you're done. So that's something you have, a pre-registered device, plus something you are. Multi-factor, cryptographically strong. How does this show up on the score sheet? Well, I'm gonna say it's cost, pretty similar to all these others. In fact, passwords, by the way, are not free because the number one call to most help desk is reset my password. 
And those calls are anywhere from $20 to $50 a call. So most organizations are spending a lot on passwords and just don't really realize it. Then from a convenience standpoint, again, doesn't get much easier than a, a push notification pops up. I look at my phone, I unlock the phone. That's it. From a security standpoint, I'll argue this is the one that is the most secure because we're leveraging a lot of different things here. It's multi-factor authentication. It's using a biometric. It's getting rid of a password. Therefore, a password can't be stolen because it never existed in the first place. So lots of possibilities here. And by the way, if you want to, you can sync those keys across multiple devices to make it simpler as well. Okay, now we've taken a look at some of the more popular options to replacing passwords. In some cases, they're used along with passwords to strengthen, but they could be viable alternatives to get rid of passwords and take those nasty things out of your life altogether. Basically, we in security are always trying to balance these trade-offs between high security and high convenience. Users love this, uh, and security people love this. Anytime we get a chance to optimize on both of those, that's a win for both sides. Then it's like we can have our cake and eat it too. And I do love cake. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or want to share your thoughts about this topic, please leave a comment below.